What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes on the day another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topics, tweets, videos y'all want me to talk about tomorrow? Several states have been trying to stop Donald Trump from running for the presidential ballot. However, this morning's Supreme Court ruling changes everything. And huge news guys, the lawsuit between Yuzu, a Nintendo Switch emulator, and Nintendo themselves came to a very swift end, and Yuzu appears to be officially dead. This picture of EDP 445 and Boogie 298 has been going viral. I will explain exactly what's about to go down here. The Anime Awards was this weekend. I'll go over the results with you guys in case you missed it and show you some pictures of Megan the Stallion who was also the host of the show and <laughs> oh my god. All of that and more. Here's the boy Indy, the first appearance of the month. He's doing well and he loves and misses you guys all. You guys know the drill, okay? I've shown you Indy. You gotta drop the like on the video and subscribe. Let's get into today's news, alright? So guys, this is absolutely breaking literally as of just a couple of minutes of me recording this video, but the Supreme Court just ruled a unanimous decision that reversed a uh, Colorado and a couple of other states that were basically suggesting that Donald Trump shouldn't be able to be on the ballot because of the insurrection clause, suggesting that his involvement with the insurrection means that he should not be allowed to run for president. The Supreme Court said, nah. <laughs> Supreme Court rules that the states can't remove Trump from the presidential election ballot. We're getting Biden versus Trump. Nothing is going to stop this train. Uh, the Supreme Court on Monday tossed out the Colorado court ruling that barred Donald Trump from appearing on the state Republicans presidential primary ballot. The ruling means that no other state can bar Trump or any other candidate from a presidential ballot by invoking the insurrection clause in the constitution. So there were two other states that also kind of tried to did the same thing as well. Donald Trump didn't appeal those as well, but this ruling, this reversal says that nobody can can come after Trump using the insurrection clause of the Constitution. The reason why this happened is simple. Apparently, according to the Supreme Court, they don't believe that the states actually have the power to invoke this kind of right. Reading here, it says the court said that the Colorado Supreme Court had wrongly assumed that states can determine whether a presidential candidate or other candidate for federal offices is ineligible. The ruling makes it clear that Congress, not states, has to set rules on how the 14th Amendment provision can be enforced against federal office seekers as as such, this decision applies to all states, not just Colorado. States retain the power to bar people running for state office from appearing on the ballot under Section 3. TLDR, Gang Gang is back. He's going to be still running for president. He's not going to be taking off any of the ballots. We're going to see him versus Biden. <laughs> I'll let you guys know if there's any more updates. People are wondering if the Supreme Court's going to actually go further into the whole concept of the insurrection clause of whether or not he can run or not. But right now, it looks like this train is not stopping and we are going to be seeing another wild ass 2024 Biden versus Trump year. So guys, this one is absolutely huge and breaking news for today when it comes to the gaming space, massive also when it comes to the emulation space. And it has to do with Nintendo and an emulator that has been emulating the Nintendo Switch, also known as Yuzu, probably the most popular emulation software that is being provided for people to play Nintendo games. Now, if you guys don't know anything about Yuzu or Nintendo, what's been happening? You've been seeing some of my videos. Long and short of it is that Nintendo filed a lawsuit against Yuzu, I believe it was last week, maybe even two weeks ago, I can't recall, around the, the 7 to 10 day mark, basically saying, hey, <laughs> you guys were solely responsible for us losing $80 million when it came to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, okay? Apparently before the game actually came out, Yuzu had the ability for people to come in and pirate and play Zelda <laughs> a week way before the official release, and this was the case and the basis for Nintendo coming after Yuzu to claim that yes, they were responsible for at least $80 million in damages. It's also important to note two things, okay? Number one, emulation is legal, okay? When you buy a video game, you own the game and you're allowed to extract its data and place it on a computer. And then that computer can be put into a software or anywhere where you can replay that game however way you like. You do not have to just play the game that you purchased on the console that you purchased it on. The second thing that you need to know is that Nintendo's lawsuit explicitly states that that they only want any version of the game that you play on Nintendo to be played on Nintendo devices. They do not support emulation. And if it was their choice, you could only play all of their games on their systems, periods, okay? So no preservation, you just must go through Nintendo to play Nintendo, period. They don't want you to have that ownership. And last but not least, the third problem that we'll talk about a little bit as well is the fact that Yuzu has a Patreon. They've been getting 
donations. They've been getting money, $30,000 a month. People have been giving them money to kind of support the fact that they have been providing in return these people emulation software so that they can pirate games legally, but... <laughs> My guess is there's a lot of Luffy's out there running amok doing things illegally. Anyway, we have today's update, which is absolutely massive. Oatmeal Dome. A lot of people had tweeted it, but I think Oatmeal Dome was one of the first people to kind of jump in and talk about it, saying that Yuzu in his current form will cease to exist. Their settlement with Nintendo prohibits any distribution of Yuzu and built and source code form development must also stop the yuzu website and related services will also be shut down it is officially all over for yuzu so the first news tidbit that we got before the judgment and the injunction was that that they were going to have to pay uh two million dollars 2.4 million dollars in damages to nintendo which is nothing for Nintendo. And if they settled with that, you would think like, oh, okay, well, usually you just had to pay a little fine and people are afraid to down your emulation stuff. Maybe they'll be a little bit more scared when it comes to monetizing. However, the judgment and the junction <laughs> basically said it's all over. A permanent injunction is entered against defendant and joining it and its members, agents, servants, employees, independent contractors, successors, assigns, and all those acting in privity or under its control form, letter A, offering to the public, providing, marketing, advertising, promoting, selling, testing, hosting, cloning, distributing, <laughs> or otherwise trafficking in Yuzu or any source code or features of Yuzu. Every verb that you could ever think about when it comes to Yuzu doing any kind of action has been added to this paragraph and saying you are not allowed to have any usage of any verb. You are not allowed to act. Your action has been Revoke. Another big point was number four. The court further orders that defendant and its members, officers, agents, service, employees, blah, 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 all third parties acting in active concert or participation with the defendant, including but not limited to any domain name, registers, or registries holding or listing defendant's website. Okay, so if you're Yuzu or you are any party that's affiliated with Yuzu is what they're saying. Letter A, you have to surrender and permanently cease to use the domain name yuzu-emu.org. Any variant or success that they're of controlled by defendant or its members and any other website or system that defendant of its members owns or controls directly or indirectly that involves or harms Nintendo's intellectual property. Oh my God. Nintendo's intellectual property, they protect that bad boy with their lives. Finally, number four, the court further orders that pursuant upon Nintendo's election and the extent controlled by defendant or its members, the destruction by deletion, all circumvention devices, including all copies, of Yuzu. All circumvention tools used for developing or using Yuzu, such as Tegra, RCMG UI, Hakati, Atmosphere, Lockpick RCM, EDP Dump Tool, NX Dump Fuse, and Tegra Explorer, and all copies of Nintendo cryptographic keys, including the prod keys, and all other electronic material with defendant or its members' custody, possession, or control that violate Nintendo's rights under the DMCA or infringe copyrights owned or exclusively licensed by Nintendo. Destroy. The word that they used was destruction, evisceration. Nintendo said, we're taking your money, we're taking your website, and you are deleting everything that you have, every single inventory, everything, your entire stock. I will take it. <laughs> Nintendo said, give me, you are no longer allowed to seize, which shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, right? The fact that Nintendo is this ruthless. I can't remember the article or the website where they... <laughs> Didn't Nintendo do something where they, they got a man who, who was making a bunch of like uh, uh, emulation piracy or software? He was in charge of, of basically making some fake stuff. I think it was for the Nintendo 3DS. I don't know. It was really bad. They got the guy. And then, didn't they just like charge him like a billion dollars every year? Like for the rest of his life, he has to pay tax. <laughs> <laughs> to Nintendo, right? All the money that he makes, a portion of it forever has to go to Nintendo, right? So it's, it's not a surprise that if Nintendo would do that to an individual, that this is the kind of destruction that they would rain upon Yuzu, which was a, not a company, but a group of people who were making money and receiving donations from friendly people around the world for providing them services that are legal, but people not using it legally. 
you know what I'm saying? It's a little muddy. Which then creates two sides here of legality here, which a bunch of people are coming in here being armed seat lawyers. I don't know the exact details, but the two sides here are, hey, screw Nintendo. Here they are, again, being a tyrant, and they are destroying emulation, okay? The very form of preservation itself. These guys did nothing wrong over at Yuzu. Yeah, we donated money to them in order so we can continue to own our own software and everything. So they've done nothing wrong. Emulation is legal. You have the other side, the goody two shoes, you know, with the glasses, like, hey, leave, leave the multi-million dollar company alone, okay? Nintendo, you don't deserve this. <laughs> I'm teasing, okay? How dare you harm Nintendo, okay? Nintendo has every right to protect its IP and its assets, okay? Yuzu shouldn't have been making any video games. They should have been doing everything for free and keeping it above line. But they got greedy. They flew too close to the sun and... <laughs> Argument that, and I think the reason that Yuzu really got got really badly was the fact that... <laughs> They infringed on Zelda IP. And if they truly created something that stopped Nintendo from getting $80 million in revenue before the game actually dropped, like if they were responsible for that, even if they were, there's no way that Nintendo is not going to figure out how to pursue this to the fullest extent. OK, because that two point four million dollars that they got back in compensation, they don't care about. They just want to shut down Yuzu so they don't lose another 80 million freaking dollars when they drop the switch Two or when they drop a new IP for you guys. And you don't have Yuzu out here. These people out here using it to <laughs> Yuzu using it. Is that was that on purpose? They don't want another Zelda catastrophe. So they're basically stuffing out the, the competition right now. This also helps with them keeping the preservation of playing Nintendo games through their systems. OK one less Nintendo Switch down means that anybody who emulates now in the future are going to be terrified. There's another Nintendo Switch emulator. I think it's called Re Ryujin. It's called Ryujinx. Okay, that's the one that's alive. Okay, we don't know <laughs> if Nintendo will come after them. I don't know how they operate and if they operate anything differently from Yuzu. They are an alternative and what everyone's going to start flocking over to. But if they're not careful and Nintendo puts the Eye of Mordor over to their site, if they if, if Nintendo decides to look over there and blink and then bring on the hell Mary and the lawyers and the ninjas, they might be next on the chomping block. Anyway, the guys over at Yuzu on their Discord have also officially confirmed this as well, saying here, hello, Yuzuers and Citra fans. We write today to inform you that Yuzu and Yuzu's support of Citra are being discontinued effective immediately. Yuzu and his team have always been against piracy. We started the projects in good faith out of the passion for Nintendo and his console and games, so we're not intending to cause harm, but we now see that because our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures, and allow users to play games outside of authorized hardware, they have led to extensive piracy. So <laughs> it's almost like because they have created the conduit for you people to do things legally, but sounds like because people are doing it illegally, they're just going down to the heart of the matter who are providing the tools themselves. As you guys can see, it's a bit conflicting here, right? It's, it's almost like they're creating the the avenue for people to do things illegal they're not doing anything illegal in the first place is what kind of people are feeling essentially what they have created allows people to circumvent nintendo's technological protection measures which is interesting right because it sounds like nintendo has now just confirmed that they are going to be able to make it so that you can only play Nintendo games on Nintendo hardware. That seems to be their ultimate goal. Their ultimate goal is to make sure that emulation is not possible, period. <laughs> they want to make every game that you play only played on that system. They're trying, that's the bigger fight that they're trying to come after here. It's not about Yuzu, it's all about ownership of their own IP and rights and making sure that you go through their avenues and nowhere else. In particular, we have been deeply disappointed when users have used our software to leak game content prior to its release and ruin the experience for legitimate purchasers and fans. This seems like to be a bot Apple situation where, hey, somebody got the, the file, Zelda, and the game, and then they leaked it, and everyone's like, dang, that's crazy. Anyway, I know we're not supposed to be playing this the game right now. We don't have the legal ownership of it, but $80 million worth of it was downloaded prior to the game actually being illegally acquired. That in itself, I think both sides can agree. Whether you're emulation or non-emulation or Nintendo or anti-Nintendo, I think we can all agree that $80 million worth of people having a copy of a game that has not legally released yet, right? That... <laughs> 
<laughs> that is when we run into the oopsie whoopsie no no land okay like yeah yeah went a little bit too far we have come to the decision that we cannot continue to allow this to occur piracy was never our intention and we believe that piracy of video games and on video game consoles should end effective today we will be pulling our code repositories offline discontinuing our patreon accounts and discord servers and soon shutting down our websites we hope our actions will be a small step toward ending piracy of all creators works thank you for the years of support and for understanding our decision man so now the question piracy being thrown around a lot is the concept of is emulation piracy and the answer to that question is no However, it appears that Yuzu was the conduit for actual illegal activities, so much to the extent of that Nintendo has somehow been able to make a case that, yeah, they, they created this mess. So guys, that's the long and short of it, but it's not the end of what seems like will be a, a pretty long hill battle when it comes to emulation, piracy, what's legal, what's not legal, Nintendo's right or non-right to destroy people who are stopping them from getting paid a million dollars. Who's actually, I think the question here that we should be asking ourselves is like, who is actually in the wrong here? Because when I look at this situation here, there seems to be a lot of intricacies. I see people blaming Yuzu, saying that Yuzu has downloaded and stolen source code over the past in the past before and then hit it behind paywalls you can only access source codes behind paywalls people have commuted and said that on twitter as i've been reading people are saying that nintendo this is the bad guy here because they are trying to make sure that emulation gets shut down saying that yuzu was a legitimate company and that the donations does not form actual forms of compensation again armchair lawyers that cannot actually confirm or deny this information is true but one thing is actually pretty interesting is the, how the speed of this settlement came through okay this was literally less than a week i feel like since the lawsuit came and the lawsuit finished which makes me feel like nintendo somehow somewhere legally had a strong case against yuzu which then brings us back to yuzu talking about its disbandment and saying how they do not support piracy they do support emulation but it appears that they were a conduit for bad faith figures to steal and now the question is is okay are we now going after yuzu when we should be going after the people who are stealing like <laughs> the people who are actually out here taking source code and information from games that they did not legally buy is it a situation now where we had a good thing going on, and then too many people took advantage of the situation, and now do we blame the thieves, the people who did not buy Zelda, but they downloaded it and played it before the game came out. Everybody now is looking for the right person to point fingers to, and I think it's a little bit convoluted in black and white to say that one party is completely guilty. I think <laughs> I think the one party that is definitely 100% completely guilty that we can all agree about right and I'm, I'm not going to snitch on them but the people who are stealing and then you know not buying the game and they're just stealing it they're just like oh i can play this game for free do 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 down oh thank you yuzu for letting me play this game for free because i'm never going to give any money to, to nintendo that's that's just theft right i'm not going to snitch i'm not going to shame it i'm not going to be like protect the multi-million dollar corporation but we can all agree that <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like one of the crimes because theft is a crime that we just you know turn a blind side to because it's 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 always the energy of just kind of fuck nintendo but even though that's the energy we, legality still stands in place it seems like these guys are not being held accountable instead we are now getting yuzu getting trampled over with who is the conduit for these guys unfortunately it feels like that that is what is happening here and now we're in a situation is what's going to happen to the rest of the Nintendo emulators? What's going to happen with those other guys? Re re Jinx? Are they going to be fine? <laughs> if I'm Ryu Jinx, I'm running. I'm out. I don't want the Nintendo ninjas to hit me. I'm scared. And then now it's going to make people more afraid to, to, to emulate legally because it's still a legal practice. But Nintendo Th their goal is to destroy it. They do not want legal emulation because legal emulation to them means that people are going to be able to access it illegally. That's that's the bare bones tax of it. They're saying if emulation exists and you don't buy it through Nintendo, even if you do it legally, other people are going to do it illegally. And so we're just going to shut the whole system down. That's <laughs> it's a it's a it's a lose 
lose. And I think the system would work in place if people did not steal, if they did own the IP and the assets and the digital format and then use it to copyright, we'd have a one for one. You could play it on Yuzu and Nintendo had their money, but we're not going to have that. Therefore, it seems like Nintendo is going to destroy everything to ensure that nothing happens it, it just sucks overall but yeah guys that's the yuzu situation absolutely breaking it monumental in terms of what it's going to do for the emulator space it, this is just nintendo too there's a bunch of emulators for a lot of different other companies and games and softwares and i don't know if this is going to have a cascade effect i don't know if this is going to create a precedent for other people to, to follow because these corporations are going to want to maximize their profits and make sure that they they don't lose any money because that's just what companies do i'll let you guys know if anything else evolves from this situation but this appears to be the end of yuzu rest in peace to the gang gang and the homies if you guys have any questions or concerns or comments or feel like i left anything out feel free to let me know in the comments below oh my freaking god okay super rebirth a lot of you guys asked me to talk about this uh picture that's going around that's spreading <laughs> Boogie298 doing a collab with EDP445. Two big boys who have been under a lot of controversy over the past couple of years for different reasons showing up and a picture with them eating like 20 or 30 different Big Macs, some donuts, some Doritos, multiple Mountain Dews and Cokes. Definitely got the candles in the background. What exactly is going on? You got the road mic up there. What are they talking about? What are they cooking? For those of you guys at home who have no idea who <laughs> these two gentlemen are, bless your living heart, okay? The guy on the right here is EDP445, uh, an ex-YouTuber, person who used to make a lot of content creation, who got caught a long time ago on the sting operation by another YouTuber for trying to hook up with underage girls. That's right. He uh, was saying that he went out there to go get some muffins and then he got canceled on the internet this guy was a YouTuber who used to also talk about like the Philadelphia the, uh, Eagles and football and yell and curse and blah, blah, blah. He got canceled to infinity and now he's just trying to survive apparently. But he keeps popping up every now and then. There was something that happened with him and Jadeon. I don't know. But he's just been kind of like hovering around the internet and people were like just basically equate him to just being a super huge creep. And then you got Boogie2988 um, <laughs> who recently was in a documentary done by a person. But I think his name was Mike Plum. I'm double check the name really fast. But he was this documentary where they talked about Boogie. Boogie being a YouTuber, but also an OG YouTuber who talks about video games. He used to go under the character and alliance of Francis, who was just a big fat guy who just kind of was just big and fat. That was just basically the character. <laughs> and now two of the biggest guys that we know on YouTube in terms of built and size are coming together for what appears to be a new documentary. Boogie2988 actually said, hey, I can explain what's going on without breaking NDA. He said, yes, this is EDP 445. Yes, it is real. This film is set for Mike Klum documentary. So Mike Klum was the person who made the Boogie 298 documentary and it was absolutely absolutely immaculate it was a breakdown of boogie 2988 and all of his vices and him and hookers and money and 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 everything it was <laughs> It was a wild rabbit hole, that's for sure. He said, no, we weren't hanging out. We were filming a doc in this photo. Yes, we discussed the horrible stuff he has done in the past. No, it won't be on his channel. No, it's not a fluff piece designed to make him look good, you doofuses. The doc will likely drop by summer on the Likely Clum channel. Yes, I know the optics of this and how people would accuse me of p -philia, but I am not a pedo, so don't care. And yes, I was compensated for travel and expenses to be in this thing. This is... <laughs> Look, we got to figure out, first of all, there's there's no way that that this man is going to agree to become on a documentary that's not going to be a potential fluff piece. He's not going to come out here. Hey, guys, let's talk about all the things I did that were bad and put myself in jail like this. <laughs> he's going to come up here. He's going to do his best to defend himself. And he's also getting paid to be out here okay for him this is in my opinion this is definitely going to be a bit of a fluff piece but it's interesting because as much as people are like no why is this happening no why are you sitting at a table with 8445 why is this documentary blah 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 right as soon as the video drops the same people are saying no this is disgusting we'll probably watch it <laughs> 
<laughs> the optics, this or that, they're watching it. They're curious. They want to know what EDP 445 has to say. What is his defense? Is he going to admit himself? What is true or what is false compared to him? People want this information and Mike Plum will be delivering it. So I'll let you guys know when that does drop and there's any other spoilers or teasers into this documentary that's going to be dropping, but it's going to be an absolute hell Mary shit show. Here's a quick one off with you guys asking me, hey man, how you been lately? Any secret plans you've been working on? Um, I'm trying to think. I've been okay. I've been chilling. I've been staying away from people. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That's the biggest thing. But also, do you guys, I don't know if you guys really care about this. I mean, I, I guess I'll just tell you. I'll just talk to you. I have I have this thing that's going on where I don't like people and I'm I'm a little worried. <laughs> Because I feel like that that sentiment has been increasing lately. So like, hear me out, okay? I'm just, just going to ramble. No news or nothing like that. But you guys can let me know how you feel about this sentiment, right? But I I don't know if it's the exposure to social media or the, the sentiment of my job. But as I get exposed to more and more people, I find myself in this place where I just want to continue to close myself off and keep my circle smaller and smaller. The more garbage people that I feel like I've been exposed to in life, it, it's like I feel like finding people who are worth that time and energy to experience for, for my own spin, for my own energy, it just becomes less and less. I I value, uh, I talk about this all the time, IRL or my streams, but I value the concept of energy. And I think that in order to be happy in life, you have to you know have good energy and then protect your energy. And protecting your energy revolves around keeping people around you that are also equal energy. Now, not everybody around you is going to be like perfect. And I'm not trying to say create a cult of just like the perfect people or whatever, right? But you got to keep away and disabandon and run and cut and prevent the, the, the bad energy, the bad people. There are people in your lives that will zap you. I think there are certain people in your life who will give you energy. There are certain people who will not touch your energy. And there are certain people who will take, right? There, there's at least those three types of people. And I think it's very important to stick around with people who both either give energy or do not affect your own. But the ones that... The, and it's hard to peel yourself away from those people who take away your energy. And it comes in many different formats and facets of life. It can be very small, very micro stealings of energy, but even just those little ones, you gotta you gotta be careful. So yeah, I feel like I've become a bit antisocial and I have been loving it. I <laughs> <laughs> I really have just been loving just making content for you guys, just streaming, just playing video games, sticking to myself. And hopefully it doesn't keep expounding or whatever, but like, I'm, I don't know if I should be worried by the fact that I'm, I'm becoming happier while uh, being more secluded, but that's just something I wanted to talk to you guys about. That's kind of what I've been going through. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how to make some more content for you guys. I want to do something new, man. I I I, um, I watched the the Final Fantasy Distant Worlds, uh, uh, which was really cool, the orchestra, man, and it was so inspirational. And I think it to myself, like how can I create? I want to create something that I haven't created before, and I want to, I want to, I want to make people feel things that they haven't felt before. I, I feel it in my bones, but I don't know what it translates to yet. So I'm, I'm kind of going through something mentally where I want to like transform or evolve something, but I don't know what it is, and it's frustrating to not be able to picture what it is that you want to do, but you know the feeling that you want to create. <laughs> As an artist, is so freaking frustrating. So. I've just been thinking, pondering what it looks like, restrictions. How do I do it here? How do I do it somewhere else? Do I do it somewhere else? Do I make sure I don't spread myself too thin? A lot of just inward thinking. I think a lot. And when I start, ended up burning myself out from just thinking, I just go back into my hibernation cave of just playing video games, eating and going to the gym. That's kind of my life, basically. I'm a boring guy. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't dislike it either because I am not a huge fan of volatility or drama. That's that's as, as funny as it is, right? We like to talk about the drama that happens in this space, but I don't want to push that drama onto others or not that stuff affect me. So that's kind of where I've been. Um, secret plans. I have some merch hopefully coming out for you guys soon and i um, just going to keep working on some more content. I'll let you guys know if anything comes down that pipeline. I finished off with also a few one-offs in case you guys want to know, but Matt Pat, uh, the guy, the game theorist himself, he has done his final, oh man, his final game theory, Five Nights at Freddy. Thanks for the memories. This is it. Okay, this is not his last game theory video probably, but it's definitely his last Five Nights at Freddy, the, the the game that put a lot of people like on the map map, like him, Markiplier, a lot of people that, that, that blew up people's careers. They were already doing well, but it just took it to the next level. It's been trending on YouTube here, Game Theory, FNAF, thanks for the memories. Well, loyal theorists, this is it. This will be my final FNAF theory. And this time, I mean it. 
Oh man. It's crazy, bro. I can't. I don't think I can actually play his intro because it kind of gets copyright striked or whatever. Uh, but yeah, man, it's oh my lordy, 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 lord. It's this. We're we're seeing the end of a legacy here. The end of an anime. Oh my! I can't even feel like I can. I can't even stomach this, bro. I don't want this to end. I guess good things come to an end, but no. <laughs> Not while I'm alive. All of you guys who make amazing things and content and music, okay? You can stop after I'm dead. But while I'm alive, you're not allowed to freaking stop, okay? That's just the rule. Comment section saying, this is truly the end of a generation. Thank you for everything, Matt. You've changed so many lives in such an amazing way. We'll miss you. It's sad to see someone from my childhood retire. All of those FNAF theories, film theories, or whatever. They're filled with joy. Now that you're retired, it makes me and others sad. This is actually making me emotional. Truly the end of an era. As a single mom who's been watching these... Well, my 11 year old i'm sad to see you go mad pat i hope your family continues to grow and that you and steph and ollie have happiness forever oh my gosh man it's just truly all ogre i get it omni you know don't be sad because it's over be glad that it happened yada yada shut up with your freaking positivity and and correctfulness and logicalness okay i'm just i don't want it i want to be unreasonable okay <laughs> Allow me to live and la la land. Allow me to believe that this is just going to be Matt Pat ending it. And then he's going to be like, you know what, guys? After two years of not making content videos, I realized that I got to make some more. And now I'm back. I'm looking for the clues that show the breadcrumb that shows that he is going to. <laughs> I'm going to stay the Lulu. Abra escapes it. The next Splatfest was announced. It's the finally one where Fry wins? Question mark. No, it doesn't. I give up. I'm done. I'm done trying. I, I give up. Okay. I'm staying racist forever. Which instrument would you play? The drums being Shiver. The guitar being Fry. Or the keyboard being Big Guy. Uh, and that's going to be happening, what, March 24th? That's when it's going to be happening. March 22nd. I don't know. I don't care. All I know is that Fry is going to lose again now you guys are thinking hey omni you're probably doing reverse psychology now if you because you're thinking that fry is going to lose she's going to win no i just no i give up i don't even i'm not even looking at what it is I, what would i play on here i play all three they're all nice but i i've lost hope <laughs> they've taken my will to fight i'm going to keep picking fry no matter what okay i'm still going to support her but i have no expectations there's just no way and even if she does win i'm done i already said it it's for life it's for all the marbles i'm staying racist forever because they're doing my girl dirty guys we need to talk about the crunchyroll anime awards and megan the stallion who was up here cosplaying as gojo and bucciarati and all of these oh my god megan if you guys don't no, Megan the Stallion is a huge, huge weeb, okay? She comes from the nerdverse. She was one of us before she blew up, okay? It's like if I, you know, basically blew up and then I became like Usher. Like, it's, it's Omni, baby. You know, I'm out here, Mr. Still Your Girl. That, that... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, Megan the Style, you absolutely killing it with these recent cosplays. I'm going to show you guys just a few clips of some of Megan the Style and some other uh, cosplays that were up there as well. Some of the parts of the videos you guys might want to see. And I'll go over the results for you guys as well for all my weeb hits out there. And for those of you casuals out there who are curious about what the best anime is, how it's becoming mainstream now with Megan the Style and other popular people as well. And if you guys want to get hip on some good anime for this year from that came out last year, this will be like the perfect place for you guys to know. Anyway, Megan the Stallion said we made it to Japan, right? And oh my lord, oh my lord. Let me let me let me get a better. Let me get a better. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Gojo. Yeah. 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 You know, there's a lot of people who are hating because there's a lot of people don't think like when you see like big stars come up here and you do the cosplay thing, they're like, Meh, you know, you you mainstream people and they start gatekeeping. Right. But I'm all about, you know, everybody coming here and enjoy themselves. And I, I, I am I am a supporter. We have the same like white black thing going on. I might do a Gojo cosplay soon, but I give this an 11 out of 10. Here's another Meg outfit with her inspired by Bruno Bucciaranti, one of the most popular characters in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. Oh man, he is, Bucciaranti is an excellent, excellent character. And this is her <laughs> cosplay version on that, her take on that. And again, another 12 out of 10. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah. This is, this is art. This is, this is Pete.
<laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. First of all, congratulations to all of the honorees tonight. This was such an amazing year for anime, and it's a testament to the talented creators seated in this room tonight. And shout out to all the anime fans watching all around the world. I love that they get a chance to vote with these awards, and we really get to find out what the fans are vibing to. Now, it is my honor to present Anime of the Year! Okay, we need a more hype crowd, okay? They should have been, like, celebrating, like, three times over the announcement of that, but... <laughs> but, yeah, I believe uh, Meg Thee Stallion's favorite anime of all time, I think it's Hunter x Hunter, which is my favorite anime of all time, which means, you know, Meg, what's up? What's up? Let's, uh, let's talk some anime, homie, because... <laughs> All right, I need to chill, okay? I'm getting kind of thirsty over here. So there were a few words. Let me go over them really quickly with you guys. Best romance went to Horomiya, The Missing Pieces. Best fantasy went to Demon Slayer, Kometsu no Yaiba, The Swordsmith Village Arc. It was an absolutely amazing arc. It beat out Ranking of Kings, The Treasure Chest of Courage. It beat out Mushuko Tensai, Jobless Reincarnation, Hell's Paradise, Mashal, The Ancient Magus. This was absolutely stacked. Best drama went to Attack on Titan, final season, the final chapter. Chapters, okay, I believe this is like the final final like I mean <laughs> I don't think this is like the final part one. I think this is like the final, the final, I think. I hope at least. But yeah, it beat out Oshinoko, which was a super huge pick. It beat out Finland Saga Season 2. Man, oh man, I love... Finland Saga Season 2 was absolutely immaculate. But it was going against Attack on Titan, Heavenly Delusion, My Happy Marriage, and Two Year Eternity Season 2, okay? Oshinoko was also, the first episode was amazing. But man, guys, Finland Saga Season 2 is one of the best anime that I have seen. So was Attack on Titan, to be fair, but woo, uh, man, this one's hurting my heart a little bit. You guys got to watch Villain Saga. If you, I'm telling you, I'm, I am a huge advocate. <laughs> if you like Stardew Valley, but you also like really good film, you will love it. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but this is it. Best action went to You Are My Special. We got uh, Jujutsu Kaisen season two, rightfully so. This was the stacked of stacked of stacked ones, okay? Chainsaw Man, Demon Slayer, One Piece, Bleach, and Attack on Titan. Every single one of these animes listed here. I can't believe we got them all at the same time. And every single one of these animes by themselves, if they were just not released at the same time, could have easily taken top one. Okay, these are all peak. I'm looking at it and all I see is peak and different genres. But JJK Season 2 was a special kind of peak okay and I, and I called this one out a long time ago as much as I love every single other anime that I'm seeing right here man that the Wano arc over there Chainsaw Man being absolutely peak as much as I loved everything else I saw JJK2 season 2 was just on, on another level in so many different ways we got the must protect at all cause character being Anya Forger <laughs> it's always going to go to her she is quite literally the Pikachu of the anime verse okay she is she is the Pikachu spokesperson and character of all of anime right now. Anya Desk, her face is just literally everywhere in all these different poses. She beat out Pochita, she beat out Mary, she beat out Saluda, she beat out Boji, Boji's best boy in my opinion. You gotta protect him at all costs. And beat out Bochi, I haven't watched Bochi the Rock yet. Best supporting character went to Sataro Gojo, okay? Beating out Kana Arima from Oshinoko. Power from Chainsaw Man, Power is the, the girl that doesn't take showers. And <laughs> uh, I Taka Reagan from Mob Psycho 100. Reagan was a great supporting character for the season three of Mob Psycho. Speaking of which, I don't think I touched on this. One Punch Man, I think a season three trailer actually came out. I haven't looked at it yet, but just quick announcement in case you guys don't know, that trailer is out there and <laughs> it looks good. Then we got the best main character, okay? Him. Who is the person running the show of all anime? It's Monkey D. Luffy, okay? He's the main character of the anime space right now. He beat out uh, Boshi. He beat out Eren Yeager. He beat out Denji. He beat out Mob from Shigeo Kageyama. And he beat out Thorfinn. This one's really important for me, okay? Best anime song went to Idol. <laughs> You either know the song or you don't. Hey, Andy, it's a really good song. There was a lot of good songs, but it's so big that it beat out 
Oh my god. It beat out Hell's Paradise Work, which was amazing. It beat out Suzumi, the movie. It beat out Kickback. Oh my god. From Chainsaw Man, it beat out Kickback? Anyway, best ending sequence, what they play after you get to the end of the show. Went to Jujutsu Kaisen, beating out Happiness of the Dead, which is impressive. Beating out Demon, uh, Demon Slayer and Chainsaw Man and Oshinoko and Okari. These were all really good. Best opening sequence went to Jujutsu Kaisen as well, bro. Where our blue is. Best continuing series went to One Piece because, yes, they're going to win this every single time, okay? Swept, beat out Spy, Family, Attack on Titan, Villain Saga. This one's just, this This one always goes to One Piece. This is the best continuing series of all time. They don't. They cannot get beaten in this category, in my opinion. Best Slice of Life went to Bochi the Rock. Best Art Direction went to Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer's always won in art. Best Cinematography went to JJK. Best New Series went to Chainsaw Man. Best Animation went to Demon Slayer. Last but not least, the last three, the top three best character design also went to JJK. Being now Bochi and Trigon gun and hell's paradise and demon slayer and chainsaw man they just keep winning and winning and the anime of the year the big chungi wungi went to jujutsu kaisen season two okay beating out villain saga demon slayer chainsaw man Oshinoko and Bochi the Rock. If you guys want to watch some anime, these are the six, aka seven, that you guys should cover. I just realized the nominees and the person winning, that's the reason why it's double because they're nominated and then they won as well. But these are the ones that you should definitely watch. You don't even see some anime that's really good here. Zom 100, One Piece, okay? Not nominated for anime of the year. That's how stacked it was. That One Piece wasn't even nominated for, <laughs> for anime of the year. That's insane. But yeah, guys, that's the Crunchyroll Anime Awards. It was absolutely really cool to see the representation from Megan Thee Stallion. All these other Hollywood people who are talking about their favorite animes as well. And those are the results as well. That's some good old-fashioned anime. And now we got a new season of some new stuff. This year is also already packed and hype. I highly suggest you guys watch Solo Leveling. I've been watching that. I said you guys watch Freerun. I've been watching that. I said you guys watch, uh, what is this, The Dungeon? Hungry in the Dungeon? <laughs> that's a good anime. And then we just got more coming out this year as well. It's going to be a great year for all my anime enthusiasts out there for all my weeps, okay? Hopefully next year I can make it out to the Anime Awards. I want to I want to host it like my boy Trevor Noah. I want to be up there. That's that's the next step, okay? All right, guys. Welcome to the finance segment of the channel, okay? We got to talk about Mr. Beast and how he got pulled into this whole political affair. <laughs> Talking about Nancy Pelosi. I'll give you guys a quick update. That's what's happening around the stock market. Um, Bitcoin is going absolutely bonkers. Again, This <laughs> what you guys need to know. Oh, the meme coins are going crazy as well. A quick TLDR. A lot of you guys said that you liked the segment from last week where I told you guys about Bitcoin. I've been getting you guys hip on what's happening there. Just in case you guys have some funds around floating in the crypto space, or maybe you're just curious and you're like that otter. You're like, what are those guys doing over there? You know, I'm going to keep you guys up to date on what you really need to know, and I won't put in any filler as well. But anyway, Dexerto had made this tweet. This was popping off yesterday, because, and now Mr. Beast is responding, actually, as of this morning. Mr. Beast debunks conspiracy theory that he was forced to delete a tweet about Nancy Pelosi trading stocks, okay? If you don't know what any of this means, all right, I'll make it very easy for you to understand. It's actually pretty interesting. Nancy Pelosi is the Congress representative, okay, for, I think, San Francisco, okay? But basically, what you need to know about Nancy Pelosi is... Um, <laughs> is that she is a trading god, okay? Most famously, what you need to know about her is NVIDIA. You know the, the little uh, the company that makes all of your GeForce processors for your computers? Well, they are now the third largest company in the world when it comes to their market cap because <laughs> they have just been blowing up and Nancy Pelosi knew that this would probably happen a few months ago. <laughs> the whole thing is that Nancy Pelosi and her husband might be having some some information when it comes to inside knowledge and information. Okay, they know things are going to happen before the regular people know, right? And then, you know, tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your friends, tell your wife about what's happening happening and what goes down <laughs> they invest to the stock market early with information called insider information information that the public doesn't know make trades or whatever and now nancy pelosi's stock and her entire portfolio has been blowing up okay she only makes about 200 to 300 thousand dollars a year for a rep which is still really good but apparently her earnings when it comes to stock trading is up in the millions okay she is making that big buco dollar in the stock market which has then prompted people into this conversation that 
that kind of makes sense. The bipartisanship where probably both sides actually agree, both red and blue, is that people of the government should not have the ability to kind of like trade stocks <laughs> because they have information that makes it privy for them where they can get ahead. OK, it's called insider trading. It's illegal, but it doesn't seem to be something that a lot of people up there get caught for. And even if they did, right, then you just tell your friends and your friends and your friends and your friends and your friends to go ahead and talk them, do this. And you just, hey, bro, you want to invest in the video right now, but have it layered over there and then... <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. Anyway, Mr. Beast said this shouldn't be allowed. This then created this huge like conspiracy theory with Mr. Beast where he's like, oh yeah, the reason why Mr. Beast made this tweet talking about why they should be taking it down, he deleted the tweet. The reason why he did it is because he's being controlled by Disney or his, his somebody works in this group and he's not allowed to speak out against Nancy Pelosi. There's a lot of freaking crazy people on the internet. In fact, there's some of you at home right now who are those crazy people. But if you go, right, people are pushing narratives left and right. Their entire life and soul Force. Everything they're doing on earth is meant to pander towards some wild ideology of something in the entire universe. They have a lot of energy on their hand. They saw Mr. Beast and they said, yes, I want to push whatever narrative I'm already being pushing. I want to bring them into it. And then I just want to let it spread like wildfire. Misinformation. I just want this thing to go crazy. And Mr. Beast said, first I sold my channel to Disney and now Pelosi has control over me, question mark. These conspiracies are wild recently. No idea who this dude is. No agency tells me what I can or can't say. For the record, I don't think she or others should be able to trade stock while knowing classified information. It's not even that crazy of an opinion, LOL. So he had deleted the tweet probably because he, you know, when you make political tweets on the internet, right, then people come up there, especially you being Mr. Beast, they use it and then they, you know, they abuse it and they shape it and they turn it and they transform it and they interpret it. And they. And you can take one tweet from Mr. Beast and you have two or three or four or five different type of signs turning it into their own special agenda and just using it for ammo. And probably why he did end up deleting it because he didn't want to be used for ammo for any of these positions. But then he just came back and said, you guys are wild and out. You need to chill the hell out. And now they're using this <laughs> to twist it even further. Anyway, speaking of finance, Anticoin, Bitcoin, Ethereum, meme coins, let's talk about it really fast. You guys need to know what's happening, okay? I need to protect you guys from FOMO, the fear of missing out. And I need to let you guys know that this freaking rally is happening. I've already explained to you guys Bitcoin in the last video. I explained the happening. I explained the spot ETFs. I explained what brought us to this point. I've actually been talking about it on my Patreon for months now, talking about how we're going to get to this point. <laughs> that point has finally come through. And now the question is, is what's about to happen next? As you guys can see, as of this morning, Bitcoin has hit $66,500. What you need to know about this number here specifically is that Bitcoin hit an all-time high a couple of years ago at, I think, 68 8,999. <laughs> I think it didn't touch 69K. I think it was literally a dollar, a couple of cents off, but that was the highest point of Bitcoin. And it seems to be rallying up almost to that point in which people believe it's going to hit 100,000. And there's a lot of questions about why it's spiking. Apparently, Edward Snowden is somewhere out there in Europe talking about how there is a huge government agency out here that is buying Bitcoin in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And apparently we're going to find out somewhere down the road, somewhere later, that some country, somewhere, some nation now owns a whole bunch of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. I wonder who it could be. Some people are wondering if that's just going to be America. <laughs> if you guys don't know, El Salvador is a country that put in a lot of money into Bitcoin a long time ago, back when it was it was pretty high up, but not as high as now. And people thought they that that was a fool. They, they the president of El Salvador was just a fool. And now I'm actually curious how much he made. El Salvador's president reveals unrealized profits of $173 million in Bitcoin holdings. Okay. These people called him a fool when he put all his... <laughs> <laughs> they just money into Bitcoin and now he is a hero. Anyway, on top of Bitcoin and Ethereum absolutely blowing up, cryptocurrency, everything blows up. Okay, there's a thing called meme coins. That's right. Dogecoin is back at it again. The Shiba Inu, Pepe. <laughs> All of these coins that people that don't really actually back anything, there's no reason for it to be there outside to simply just gamble and gather community support. Some of you are thinking, there's no way that this is something that can make people money. And yet, altcoins like Pepe Coin or Bonk or Whiff <laughs> have gone up 4 
100% over the past seven days. And people believe it's still going to keep going up more. I'm, I'm not here to make you guys feel like if you didn't get in here that you're missing an opportunity. I'm here to express to you guys the volatility that's happening here is very similar to what was happening a long time ago when, when Elon Musk was talking about Dogecoin and it jumped from like 0 0.001 to 1 cent and it times 1,000 everything like that. The exact same thing is happening again. It's called a bull run and everything is green. And when this is happening, people who are not in the market are like, man, I hate it. I'm missing out on making all of this money. I'm missing out. I'm missing out. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to take a tumble. It's going to go down again. It's going to happen. That's just the cyclical nature of all economy, okay? S&P 500 is an all-time high, too. It's, <laughs> it's all going to come down. The question is just when, and some people were trying to buy back into the market while now and everything is almost at an all-time high, only to be bag holders again in a, in a week, okay? I'm trying to let you guys know all of this for your own safety, that if you feel like you're missing out on the game, okay, there will be winners and there will be losers. There's a lot of gambling here at Process, and that's why I always you know tell my people on patreon yo chill don't 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 follow the news just dollar cast average dollar cast average dollar cost average anyway top five crypto meme coins by market cap is dogecoin is at 25 billion that's right there's 25 billion dollars circulating in terms of how many people own a coin that means nothing shiba inu 16 million pepe 3.1 billion bonk 2.57. Uh, WIF, I think is like uh, something with hat or a Shibu. I think it's also a Shibu coin with and hat, something like that. I can't remember. 1.64 billion. Okay. But the amounts of money, if two weeks ago you had put in any kind of money in here, any kind of uh, a lot of money in here, you put anything in here or you had it, it has gone up ginormously. And some people believe it's just going to keep going. As long as Bitcoin and Ethereum seems to be in a place where it's bullish and going up. These altcoins, these meme coins will follow, but they will have exponential more higher rates because their market cap is so small compared to like Bitcoin. That's like in the billions or trillions or something like that. So it's very easy for these meme coins to be like, oh yeah, we <laughs> let's put our money in here. And they tried it times four, times 10, times 15, times 100, their value. This is the gambling stock, okay? Lots of money to be made here. Lots of money to be lost here. So let's finance somebody. What does that mean for you guys at home that are listening? Uh, for those of you guys who don't have any skin in the game, uh, right now, all you need to know is that everyone's happy. And when everyone is happy and feeling good about the stock market, okay, usually that's when you should be afraid. In my opinion, when everyone is out here, la 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 la, everything is thriving into the market space. <laughs> You should be afraid. You should be very cautious. Uh, usually that means an incoming dip can be coming at any point in time. Uh, you're buying at all time highs. It, it's a scary place. If you've been an investor as long as me to see all of these people being happy, you'll see top companies like Mark Zuck and the CEO of, of Amazon. And all of these guys are actually selling off millions of their own stock right now because their stock is performing at an all time high. They're taking their profits. They're not selling out their business because they don't believe in it. They just know that their business is doing good. And this is a a great time to take some profits. Uh, that's uh, that's another thing that I can explain to you guys later on my Patreon as well is how to shave profits when everything is doing well. But again, if you have no skin in the game right now and you guys are curious about investing, this again is an opportune time for you guys to learn about the basics, okay? I've been telling you guys this since 2020. For years, I've been trying to get you guys hipped on investing, man, in a very safe and non-volatile way. So please do yourself a favor. I don't care if you join my Patreon as the Omniverse member. I don't care if you watch a few YouTube videos. Just become knowledgeable in investing. It's so important, okay? You don't need a lot of money. I get some people live paycheck to paycheck. You don't need a lot of money to get started, okay? It's more like a habit. It's like drinking water every day. If you can drink water every day, you can invest every day and you don't need a lot of money, okay? That's, I just, I'm just trying to get you guys, <laughs> I want you guys to do well financially. This is daddy, uncle Omni, basically speaking. For those of you guys who do have skin in the game, for those of you guys who have Bitcoin or you have meme coins or you have some investments, right? And you just don't know what to do, okay? There's a lot that you can do. Uh, you can hold. <laughs> you can wait and see if everything keeps going up and up and up. You can buy more into these stocks, right? Keep going in and going in. You can throw in tens of thousands of dollars, but my, my, this is not advice. I'm just saying, be freaking careful. Again, this is a volatile, 
market. When you see things like going up 400%, you can see things drop just as fast. And this this FOMO, this news is being spread out is on purpose, okay? Everything that you see here, even me talking to you right now, all of this stuff being pushed out to you as information is to scare you and make you have this fear that you are losing out on making a lot of money. And that's what props the price to go up and up is to make it feel like you're missing out on something freaking huge. And a lot of people have already done this. I'm trying to show you that this pattern will always reoccur okay there will always be opportunities so place and hedge your bets safely and responsible and don't feel bad that you're not making a bunch of money because again there are thousands tens of millions of people out here who try to do what you might think you're thinking about right now and then they lost all their money okay be careful moral of the story of this entire segment is to be responsible Okay, take care of your financials and don't let the feelings, don't ever bring your feelings into this place. Okay, so there's a lot of people who bet based off their feelings and they make it freaking big. There's a lot of people who bet. I've seen so many, for every success story that I've seen when it comes to any kind of financial investing in crypto, for every one, I think I've seen a hundred ones where people are like, I lost my family. I lost my savings. I lost my 401k. I lost my livelihood. I lost everything. What should I do? Like... <laughs> I'm telling you, okay, it's it's nasty out there, and I don't want you guys to be catching any strays, catch a victim. I just want to keep you posted on what's happening. And if you do want to make some knowledgeable news, you guys know where you can find me on Patreon as well, and I might be able to help you guys out there. But all right, guys, that's all I have for today's video. There's actually more things that you guys wanted me to talk about that I think I'm going to potentially save for an Omni After Dark tonight. Maybe, maybe tomorrow where I sit down and talk with you guys with some of the topics we haven't got to touch about. One of you guys wanted me to talk about some VTuber organization called Prism that's closing down. Something that's happening with Quackity. There's updates with Wilbur Scoot. There was, there was more things that were pretty big. Something about some, some channel that's been getting canceled or some gaming thing that's, that someone got fired. I don't know. There was a lot that you guys wanted me to talk about that I can't fit in a single episode because I do everything by myself. And if I did try to do it, I would just die or the video would just never come out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can maybe stream it later this evening. If you guys want to catch me, I'll be streaming on Twitch.tv. I might be streaming it on YouTube as well. And we might just do some small little deep dives on the side today. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll plan for it. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Okay, no promises. I love you guys. Okay, take it easy. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out on the streets because some streets ain't safe. And I'll catch you on the next episode. All right, thanks for watching. Drop that like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. And tell your friends about me. I'll catch you guys later. Take it easy. Peace.